there's this poor bird over here that's nested by my campsite. It's some kind of a ground nesting bird. I don't know what specific species it is, but I'll probably look that up. Every time I go over there, or even just walk around on that side of my campsite, I scare that poor thing out. <laughs> Unfortunately, it chose a nest right near a campsite. in the morning. Anishinaabe word that means entering the wilderness or into the wilderness. I like it. Let's get set up. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Off to a great start. These are sharp turns, and this kayak doesn't want to turn. And right away here, I've got a beaver dam. Uh, I don't know if I'll make it over this. I'm going upstream, and it's flowing out of there pretty good. Okay, that was too much work. What happened to you? I'll knock you over. Already some entertainment. Start things off. Don't need you, or you, or you. I think this might be my island. It's kind of an island. There's sort of a, a rocky, like almost like stepping stones that go from what looks like one island to another or a peninsula to another. I'm using my hand to measure daylight. It looks like an hour and a half. So that's why I immediately wanted to get a campsite. This is my room with a view. It's beautiful. It's kind of actually how I imagined my first campsite would be almost perfectly like kind of in a little high spot here up on the rocks water all the way around me water 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 rock oh, wrong launching spot i need to be on the other side of the island it's such a beautiful campsite and such a beautiful spot beauty spot as clean as I'd hope. These mosquitoes are starting to bug the crap out of me. Let's take care of that. Let's get that fire going. I didn't bother bringing a saw or an axe. Frankly, I didn't have much more room to work with in the kayak. This is a bit of a gamble when camping on an island as tinder and deadfall are usually pretty picked over. So it's not terribly obvious where people have been hiding their food up high, but uh... I'm just gonna go for this spot. Seems like it should work. Well, I don't know. Pushing 20 feet up? Well, that almost worked. But I got lucky. I scored some already processed firewood on the other side of the island. Sweet. In fact, it so seems like almost too easy finding firewood. I should have placed the bag further from the trunk down along this branch. In person, it seemed far enough, but looking back at the video, it's a little too close. <laughs> Thank you. 
We'll try something more complicated next time, but that'll do for now. Besides, I've got no daylight left. There's just enough light left to enjoy the evening. Set up my camp. Don't worry, I didn't bring a bunch of bottled waters, just the one. I figure I'll just turn this into a baler when I'm done. But I have a smart water filter, whatever you call that. Um, yeah. This is a really easy tent to set up. It is a Alps Mountaineering cheapy special from Amazon. It really does the job. I know this one's only about three pounds, even less if you ditch the, the, the uh, bag that it comes in and just pack that. But setup is super fast and that's something I can appreciate. Especially when you're a little behind the eight ball, spent nine hours driving here just to get here. There. Now throw the fly on. Yeah, when you've been uh, driving for eight hours, and then you need an hour to kayak in, and then you need to hang your food bag, set up your campsite. Last thing I want is to be futzing around with a crappy tent. Fix that problem any day. So this is a new addition. I got a Thermarest. Didn't have one before. I had a stupid crummy foam pad that was extremely uncomfortable last time. But not only that, it was huge. It took up so much space in the kayak. Basically, you just uh, unfold it and let it self-inflate for a little while. And it's pretty comfy. I've already laid on it once and it really wasn't too bad. And I'm gonna get you away from the fire. Probably be safer. All right, what do I do with my steaks? So I'm still debating on whether to move and go to the other campsite. I guess I would have to decide first thing in the morning if I want to just pack up and leave and go over there. Or I could just stay here and enjoy it. This is as good a spot as any. I could be fishing tomorrow instead of paddling forever. I can still do a lot of paddling and fishing. So I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself into just sticking, around, sticking it out right here. I've got a fairly clear horizon. I could probably get a better one from somewhere around the island. I don't know. We'll see in a little while. So yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll just stay here tonight. Yeah, or stay here tomorrow night. No, that's not going to work. Uh, just ripped my sock on that really jagged rock. I'm going to have to be careful about that. Shouldn't be going around it right there. Tent sake bag ripped open. Well, I have used it like twice, so you know, time for crap to just break, right? kind of how it works oh I don't know what brand or what kind of pillow it is I got but it's just an inflatable but packs really small what did I get trichology thing it's a trichology pillow so this is also an Alps mountaineering chair it's pretty light. Actually, I think it weighs about as much as the whole tent, but you know, it's stable, so there's that. Sit you right there. Now these are advertised as self-inflating, but uh, they need help. And besides, I like mine a little firmer. Oh, it almost feels like it lost some air. Well, if it is, I'm not hearing it. Okay, and that goes. For uh, a sleeping pad, I'm rocking this Coleman whatever. I tore the tag off, but I'm pretty sure this is a 45 degree or it might be a little, it might be a 38. That's what it is, 38, like a 4C or 3C. Let you have a look inside my humble abode. Here's a pillow. There's a thermarest and a sleeping pad. That should do the trick tonight. Kind of digging my new setup here. Time to clean up all this mess. Are you one of the loud mouths? Huh? Are you responsible for this? Well, I had to, I had to ditch the hat. <laughs> it was getting a little too warm. Mosquitoes aren't really bothering me right now anyway, but I'm gonna go eat some food at my designated food spot. It's gonna be a little bit dark to film at the moment, but 
we'll make do. Oh yeah, still have another bundle of firewood to grab. One thing that's really cool about this island is the number of wild edibles I've been able to find. I'll probably go over those tomorrow though. There's no light to even show and tell. I'm less nervous than when I started, but every time I hear a little rustle, I get a little bit nervous. Look how beautiful this spot is. I like it here. I like it here a lot. I could get used to this. It's time for some dinner. But for this trip, and for many to follow, I'm going to run a bit of an experiment. But it might be a bit more of a challenge to pull off than I thought. Last year, I had lost 50 pounds doing keto. But, you know, other than losing weight, the most important thing that I noticed was that I wasn't hungry all the time. I'd skip breakfast, I'd have a light snack for lunch, or no lunch at all. And then I wasn't famished at dinner time, but I'd eat a meal just to eat it. And uh, so I wasn't hungry all the time. And then when I would cheat on the weekends sometimes, or when, you know, holidays would come up, I'd find myself just starving all day long, even though I was eating four times as much. Anyway, there's some theories behind that, but uh, the, the important thing is by sticking to low carb foods while I'm camping means that I'll be hungry less, and therefore I can bring less food or rely on local food sources, like whatever I can find. If I can bring less food, that's less weight. So I tried, in this case, to bring only low carb foods. In this case, uh, some tuna, and I brought some pepperoni. Buying low carb options at the grocery stores or even at the camping stores is basically impossible. You're, you're stuck with things like tuna and pepperoni or cheese sometimes. Um, nuts are okay-ish, but as far as options that you things that you don't have to refrigerate uh, that you can take out with you uh, where you don't need to keep them cool or warm or whatever as far as those options are concerned they're all soups that contain noodles or rice or there are different uh, uh, freeze-dried meals that contain uh, contain those kind of things I did bring um, uh, some rice some Uncle Ben's or something like that some chili so those are okay they're not they're they're, they're 50 grams of carbs per uh, serving, which is an entire day's worth if you're on keto. So I'm going to eat as little as possible see, and stick with low carb options, but then see if uh, I I'm, I'm even need the extra food. I brought way more food than I need, so if I have a lot left over, then maybe my theory is going to, uh, going to stand. Of course, I could just catch a bunch of fish. Not too many. I got a conservation license, so uh, I can't go hauling lots of fish out of the water, but a couple will do. So this is uh, the most boring one that I've got. It's just garlic and herb. The other ones have like sriracha and stuff in them. I bet they're going to be a lot better, but I'm just going to go with bland this time. Now my campsite is that way. On the other side of the island, I'm as far away from my campsite as I possibly can be. That's of course going to help with uh, any bear issues. But the most important thing is, well, I don't know if it's the most important thing, but I think something that just I, I cleverly come in, came up with here is that there's a lot of lake that way, and the wind is blowing that way. So anything that wants to come here and figure out what this smell is needs to cross an awful lot of lake to get here. The other part being that uh, I don't have uh, me in between the food smell and whatever's downwind of me. So nothing has to cross my path following this scent in order to uh, in order to get to whatever this is. So, there you have it. Una. Not walleye, but it's food. Alright, so I'm going to pack everything away in my bear bag, even my toothpaste. I don't know if that's uh, supposed to be the case. Um, I'm just not taking chances, I guess. It smells minty. All right, so I guess I can just uh, sit and relax and enjoy the fire now. Got all the chores taken care of and I'm totally settled in and it's getting nice and dark. Uh, stick in my way. This is uh, my first legit time being way out in the wilderness on my own, having did all the driving myself, getting here myself, paddling out here myself, setting up camp myself, etc., etc. It's a really cool experience so far. I'll let you know in the morning if I feel the same way. Suffice it to say, it's, uh, it's going really well. Agenda. Northern Lights. Well, we have one problem, and that's that it's 
kind of cloudy. There's a few breaks in, in the clouds here and there, and I see clearings uh, off to my south. It might be workable. I don't know. We'll see. I just uh, checked the uh, current conditions. The last three hours were uh, a KP index of two, which for local midnight, which would be right around 1 a.m. Uh, in this location or about 1.30 a.m. in this location. Two is just about good enough. It might get it done. It won't be overhead. It'll just be kind of on the general horizon. This sort of minor event is being triggered by a small hole in the uh, sun's corona, which is allowing some more solar wind through. It generates uh, some, some weak northern lights, which is good enough for this location. Um, I'm way far north. I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, 60 degrees geomagnetic latitude, 50 degrees... Uh, regular latitude way up here I'm not sure if I'll stay up that late because I'm beat but my cameras will pick it up that or I can try and take a nap and wake up we'll have to see so it's uh 1 30 in the morning and I'm in a zen like state right now just listening to the bugs and the frogs mostly frogs there was a fleeting moment of northern lights. Well, if you can call it that. It was more like just a, a green glow on the horizon. The haze is too thick and uh, I think there's some high cirrus clouds that rolled in too that have completely obscured everything. I'll show you what little video there is. But uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just going to go to bed. Try again tomorrow night feels good. Tired, ready to go sleep. Sleep in. Alright, good night. This island is just about three acres in size. At first glance, it just doesn't seem like the kind of place that could sustain any substantial mammals full time. But I was proven wrong. The piles of pine cone debris betrayed the presence of something, but what? It doesn't seem likely that these piles were left neatly by a bird, and it was hard to believe that this could have been a squirrel. But it turns out, at least one fat and happy squirrel was in fact having zero difficulty subsisting on the island. Some little squirrel's been hungry. After surveying the island for potential wild edibles, the concentration and variety took me a bit by surprise. Strawberries, raspberries, rose hips, juniper, dandelion, blueberries, and more. Pine nuts were abundant. But this little fella seemed satisfied to munch on the young pine cone buds and bide his time until the yummy stuff comes into season. He should have little competition. Morning. Well, I, uh, I think I slept like a rock for the first few hours. Sun was already up at 5.14 in the morning. It's so early. I think it's, uh, it's 8.45 right now. Setup's pretty comfy. I've been mostly too warm, so that's a good problem to have. I can just shed stuff if I need to. Mm. Anyway, I think it's time to get up. Pretty comfy setup. Maybe too comfy. <laughs> well, at least it doesn't taste bad. Tannins or tannic acid give black tea its distinctive color, but organic decay, especially decomposing wood, Give some bodies of water this same brown tea color. After it's filtered out, it's still yellow. I chose these three days in part because of the forecast calling for three crystal clear nights and sunny days. Go away, Hayes. I would later find out that wildfires had been raging in northern Alberta and were responsible for much of the smoke, haze, and cloudiness in Manitoba. But my luck is about to change, though. Or then again, maybe not. Rip. I really did not want to make this four kilometer round trip back to the parking lot, hoping that a missing screw from my fishing rod was somehow, maybe, still hanging out in the bed of the truck. But I wanted to go fishing. I suppose I could have used the water bottle and line trick and still had tackle, but no, I wanted a working pole. And I didn't come all this way to go fishing with a water bottle. Room. Well, I thought for sure I was totally crap out of luck. Take a look at this. You little bugger. Why? Why you do this? 
It's always the small things that make trips interesting. <sighs> All right. You're going to stay right in there, bud. This always cracks me up whenever I see this. Nothing. All right. I'm going to power up this beaver dam again. Or just land on a rock. One or the other. Didn't see you there, buddy. All right. accomplished. You can see all this haze that I'm dealing with. It was nice and pretty blue a minute ago. And you now this high stuff rolled in again. Balls. Go away, clouds. I took a long detour and found another island nearby with its own campsite. This island was much smaller though, and there was very little flat ground. I also found a few spots I might want to try fishing at later. Ooh, big old snapper. If you saw that, nothing really too special. But now I know there's another island with another campsite. Make my way back to mine. Fishing pole fixed. Be back in business. Go see what the smallmouth or walleye game is like in here. All right, back to home sweet home. And now I can fish, fix my fishing pole. Much better. How in the world did you get off there, buddy? That's a lot of threads. That's a lot, a lot of threads. I had a little bit of a light lunch around 11, and it's uh, 5.30 now, and I'm finally actually hungry. I'm gonna eat a few snacks, and then um, actually go fishing. I kinda, <laughs> about two o'clock, just decided to take a nap. Thought it would be about an hour. Ended up being like two and a half. <laughs> that's okay. I'm here to relax and stay up late and watch the sky anyway, so that's perfect. Way more relaxed today than yesterday at this time, so. I'm gonna chow down on some food and go do some fishing. If I can catch a walleye, that'll be real dinner. Once you get bored of water, There's another thing you can do. And it's easy to get bored of water when you're trying to actually stay hydrated. You can use these Mio's or anything similar to turn your plain old water into something a little bit more delicious. And it doesn't add any calories. So if you don't like food coloring, well, it comes with a lot. <laughs> there are some alternatives out there that don't have the food dyes in them. So there's something out there for everyone. A little beaver is just kind of hanging out next to me. He got closer and closer to me each time. And both times he made a nice big splash. I don't see a beaver lodge nearby, so he must be just hanging out looking for some food. They really are the biggest rodent. They just look like a giant rat. Doesn't seem too scared of me. Oh, there's a beaver lodge. He's right there. That's his house. He certainly didn't like me being anywhere near them. There's another, <clears throat> found another beaver lodge here. I think that makes three on this one little lake. Haven't caught anything. Haven't tried very many things yet, though. I think I've resigned myself to the fact that there's... Not any fish to be caught today, or at least not at this hour. This is just sort of an unnamed widening in the river, in the Rabbit River, and there doesn't seem to be much more, much going on here. I did get a bite on a jig at one point, but that was about it. Probably a really small fish. At this point, it's going to be time to uh, build a fire, maybe eat a little bit more food. I haven't had much today. If you added it all up, I'd probably ate, I don't know, 250 calories? Maybe 300? Not very much. And I'm not super hungry. 
We only have a few more hours of daylight left, but it actually, it's clear. It looks like it might stay clear. There's just a little bit of a, a spot of high cirrus. I can work around that. That's totally cool. So maybe we'll have a better chance tonight. Not as good of a chance of northern lights tonight. The solar wind is starting to subside. Density has decreased. We might get lucky instead. Who knows? We'll find out in a few hours. Back home. Got about, I don't know, hour and a half of daylight left. I'm gonna make some coffee. Just hang out in the sunshine here. Warm up. And then have some dinner. Much quieter tonight than last night. The frogs haven't really started going yet. There's been a couple of chirps, but that's about it. Instant coffee really isn't too bad, especially when you're out in the woods. For some, some reason, everything tastes better out in the woods. I don't know what it is. It's not really just being hungry. I don't know why. I don't. It's not the same. They say hunger is the best cook, but I think sometimes when you're all alone out in the wilderness, all of your senses get heightened. I'm hearing the geese in the distance and the wind whistling through the pine needles across the island. The little noceums just kind of floating around. It seemed like bright blobs <laughs> in the daylight. And maybe mosquitoes too. They ain't bothering me. Most of the time I don't have a lot of trouble with mosquitoes. I don't know. Right when I got here yesterday, they were pretty bad right where I pulled in or did my put in. They really haven't bothered me at all since then so I don't know I'm not complaining I made an oopsie I thought this is dehydrated chili kind of isn't you have to add water and tomato paste which looking at the ingredients there's really no tomatoes in there rip so I'm gonna do something a little funky here I've got a green cattail stock this was a very young one I think about that much of it would have been underwater couldn't have been more than about that high and some dandelion greens I'm going to mix that in with uh, a chicken bouillon cube, some of this chili flavoring, and make kind of a weird stew. Seems like it'll work. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. All right, there's the uh, soup mix that's intended for chili. I tossed a bouillon cube in there. This needs to cook for probably 15 minutes. Cattail stalks kind of taste like a cross between a palm heart and maybe a, I don't know, a cabbage. They're really delicious. I've eaten them raw before but i'm gonna try these boiled in some soup should be good i hope now for a few dandelion greens this should be interesting don't you think i suppose it's time to try out my weird chili flavored stew thing it looks good Cattail could stand to cook a little longer. It's crunchy still. And dandelion, a little bit of, just a few flakes of rice and some beans. It's tasty. Dandelion greens don't taste half bad in there. The dandelion flour. Okay. I've never tried dandelion flour before, but that tastes really good. I wish I had a few more of those. I could make this again. So it's actually all right. I can taste the chicken in there too, from the bouillon cube. This is warming me up even faster than the coffee was. This is going to be a beautiful night. Not a cloud in the sky. Not even that garbage high cirrus crap. <sighs> Clearing the sinuses out. I'll post the recipe in the description. <laughs> Anybody's crazy enough to try this. I dig it. It's got a good uh, umami mouthfeel to it. I think that's from the bouillon cube. What should I call it? Forest chili? Boreal ramen? This is the boreal. Boreal? Boreal. Borizzle, forizzle. 
Boreal Stew. Dandelion greens are good. I've had them raw. They taste okay. They're kind of bitter, but cooked up with a little bit of flavoring added to it. Man, another dandelion flower. Dandelion flower kind of tastes like a, like a Brussels sprout. Yeah. This will probably end up being the spot that I try to record Northern Lights from. Maybe even Noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent, or night shining clouds, are the result of high altitude water vapor condensing on meteor smoke and rocket exhaust particles at over 70 kilometers above the Earth. That's practically the edge of space. These clouds appear in summer months, but only at the highest latitudes and typically out of view for all but the most northern cities in North America and Eurasia. Long after sunset, these clouds remain bathed in sunlight, even as the sky is mostly darkened. While I didn't catch any noctilucent clouds while in Nopamine, this display occurred much farther south and was visible from my backyard. Okay, I got some multiple flammable materials here. Uh, some dried grass, some lichen, uh, moss, and uh, some baby's breath looking flowers that I found too. I can't even find them anymore, but they're in there somewhere. Using multiple materials like this, should be able to get it going. And then once something catches a spark and goes to flame, we can sustain it with some birch bark. We'll break this up a little bit more. I'm filming in the spot that I am because it's kind of hard to do this over the uh, actual fire pit. But we'll uh, clean the spot around it, get a flame going, and I'll shove her in there. So now this is the night that I came out here for. Absolutely clear skies. Now if we can only get rid of the daylight, <laughs> or the twilight I should say. It's already 10.30, but there is still twilight. It's hard to believe that I'm only 16 degrees from the Arctic Circle, but it's also only three weeks away from the uh, summer solstice. What makes this part of Canada so interesting, you can be in shirt sleeve weather in the middle of summer, and at night it's still dark enough that you can see northern lights, and reliably so most nights of the year. We'll see if today that holds true. Yesterday there was just a little bit, but uh, I was thwarted by a lot of high clouds and cirrus. No problem with that tonight whatsoever. It is as clear as you can possibly get. I'm really appreciating that right now. Frogs are a lot quieter tonight. It was deafening just about last night and now it's just just kind of some background noise. This camera is pointed due north and that's also where the most twilight is which is kind of a, a neat thing. You know you, you normally think of the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. When you're this far north it rises in the almost north on the east side and sets on the almost north on the west side. Anyway we'll see how tonight goes. Hopefully I'll have something good to show you here in a second. Hi mom, hi dad, love you both. As darkness finally crept in, the faint green and red glow of very distant northern lights appeared on the horizon. Nighttime. This in spite of really dismal strength of the auroral oval. While these lights couldn't be resolved with my eyes, the camera had no trouble picking them up at all. It does at least illustrate my point that even weak aurora are visible this far south, and you don't need to be in more than a warm sweater to see them. A shot of the Milky Way's core from the north there's an awful lot of cool stuff to unpack from this one time lapse, but a couple quick highlights. The bright light near the Milky Way center is Jupiter. The green glow along the southern horizon isn't actually northern lights, but its first cousin, called air glow, which is produced in a similar way. Extremely dark skies are required to see it. But take a look at the streaks of light darting in and out of the top half of the frame. These are low Earth orbiting satellites illuminated by the sun. The areas around 50 to 60 degrees north, like Nopamine, are especially busy with satellites as their maximum inclination stops here, appearing to head north, appear to turn around, and head back south. These orbits all converge at these latitudes. Because the sun's angle below the horizon is so shallow and stays that way through the night, the Earth's shadow is now visible against low Earth orbit, making the satellites appear and disappear suddenly right at the same inclination. 
The following evening, I captured one long, dusk until dawn time lapse of the northern sky. First, the auroral oval is utterly silent, and so the green and red glow along the horizon is now absent. This time lapse illustrates just how utterly short astronomical twilight is during the summer months at this latitude. Something that didn't immediately occur to me was the curious state of the trees on one half of the island. Typically camping on an island would mean a lack of downed, dead, and dry firewood because it gets used up by campers quickly. Yet firewood was plentiful. Then it struck me, many of the trees have been uprooted and pushed over in the same direction, west. Several other trees were topped. Certainly this is storm damage, but why to the west? Even across the island and onto the mainland, trees were pushed over and laying west. The most likely scenario is something called a wet microburst. A large mass of rain falls from a thunderstorm suddenly. These microbursts might slam into the ground at speeds well over 100 kilometers an hour and then spread in all directions. From a distance, this would then look like something called a rain foot. Years ago, a burst of wind shot west from a microburst and quickly downed these trees and weakened quickly, leaving a small, localized area of downed trees that just so happened to be right on this island. Other types of wind events, like the straight-line wind variety, would normally push trees down to the east and don't typically cause such intense damage in just one spot. Tornadoes, on the other hand, would drop trees in all directions. The damage certainly isn't permanent, and dead trees provide ample habitat for animals and bright patches of ground for new trees to take the place of former ones. It's 8 o'clock. I'm debating whether to wake up yet. It's getting warm fast. Huh. Already having battery problems. My phone's nearly dead. I've got one good Canon battery left. Two and a half on my Sony. But my uh, little brick is out of juice. Well, it feels a heck of a lot warmer right now than it did this time yesterday. I don't know if it's just because it's less windy or if it actually is warmer. But standing out here in the sun, I'm cooking. It's funny though, because it was just a couple hours ago, it was freezing. I had everything on me. I wasn't shivering or anything. I had everything on me that I could, and it was right on the edge of cold. So, yeah, yep. Well, good news, hasn't become chipmunk food yet. We've got these uh, sun-dried tomato-infused uh, chili mix. Some jalapeno beef jerky, summer sausage, and some pepper jack cheese. Just in case rice. Uh, some more tuna, another tuna. Can you tell I like hot things? And then there's this, which I haven't even touched yet. This will probably be what I eat tonight. Spam! I've already had one of these. Little baby pickles. I have one more package of pepperoni left. And we only got a, uh, a full day and then a morning left, so there's plenty of food here, whether I end up catching fish or not. I think I got a cold front coming through. It's starting to clear to my north. The clearing, clearing line is just uh, arriving overhead and the wind has picked way up. All right, I'm gonna go spend a few hours fishing. And probably find a spot to wash my hair and clean up. Hi, turtle. Quite a brisk north wind. Really balancing out this hot sunshine. And I'm just getting into this uh, other lake here. That's a, up the river a little ways from well, down the river my campsite. Probably can't hear me through all the wind. All right, I'll talk later. Another useful resource is this cattail fluff. Let's see if I can pluck some of that. This stuff is supposed to take off like gasoline if you hit it with a spark, or so I've been told. So I'm gonna give that a try tonight. Let's uh, put you someplace safe. This is about the biggest beaver lodge I think I've ever seen. I haven't seen that many. From here it looks about four feet high, maybe a little taller. Four feet high off the water. I have a fish. Not fighting real hard, but. Come here, buddy. Oh, look at that. Mr. Pike. 
I got you. Look at that. First fish in Manitoba of not very big pike. All right, you kind of swallowed the hook, buddy, so. Well, I'm not really looking to catch pike. At least that proves that there's something hiding out in this little cove here. It seems that no matter what I throw into lakes in Canada or northern Michigan, you get pike. <laughs> they are unavoidable. Manitoba fishing regulations require that barbless hooks are used. You may also collapse the barb against the shank with pliers or file the barb down. Barbless fishing is slightly more challenging, but better for conservation and are much easier to remove from the fish's mouth, especially in the awkward position from a kayak. Probably pike. Pike will just take everything. Worms, fish, spoons, shads, minnows, they don't care. If it looks tasty, they'll take it. Wind is just a whipping. Doesn't make for very good kayak fishing. Might have to get a sea anchor. Well, I got another pike, but I hooked him in the eye. Poor thing. Oh, buddy. I'm gonna try and try and fix you here without hurting your eyeball. One hook went under the eye. It looks like he's okay. That sucks. This is another pretty one. Away you go. Like I was saying, Pike will take just about anything. They don't care. Switch lures. And I got a bigger pike. That one felt a little bit more substantial. Bye bye, buddy. Well, I had something on my line. Lost it. It's probably the only thing in here that isn't a pike. Oh, it hit again. Instantly. I get something other than a pike, I'm probably gonna keep it. Another lure? Guess what? Another pike. <laughs> oh. These guys are just hours of entertainment, aren't they? There we go. He's just stuck in there real good. Oh, bent my hook too. Or I bent my hook, I'm trying to get to it. If you wanted to be on a steady diet of pike, this is the lake to be at. All right, well, I've tried five different areas of the lake and gotten, is that four or five pike? Let's go to the other side of the lake. I saw some people fishing this uh, point over here earlier and they did catch something, I just don't know what it was. And I know they were jigging for it. I think I might do the same. Having been fishing now for over three hours, all I have is a wicked sunburn. But my luck was about to change. For real this time. I did it. I finally did it. Stay on the line, stay on the line, stay on the line, stay on the line. Okay, I got you. Yeah, going nowhere, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness. I was just about to give up. What a hard fought. Day this was. Guys, this is my first walleye. They're not very big, but it'll do. That's about 15, 14, 15 inches long. Pretty fish. I bet you're pretty delicious too. <laughs> All right, time to take care of him. All right, I found the perfect little beach to clean my fish up on. A long, long ways from any campsites. Look at that, a little rock, a little shore, good to go. I'll clean him up right there. Off you go. Cook them 
bone in if I wanted to. Or I could fillet it. I'm not sure yet what I want to do. Por que no los dos? I am so stoked right now. I have a walleye. I think I'm going to uh, have a little bit of it as a fillet and then cook the rest of it, kind of boil it in the um, jambalaya and mix in some muskrat. I'm not going to mix in some muskrat. <laughs> so I was thinking I, I would mix some uh, jambalaya mix in as kind of a soup and then add a little bit of that chili stuff. So it'd be kind of like a spicy red beans and rice jambalaya seafood thing. It sounds delicious to me anyway. I'm so stoked! Let's just get there. I'm hungry. <laughs> walleye. Did I mention I like walleye? Fall eagle. And he's got a fish. No, nope, that's a hog. Peregrine pelt. He's got a fish. No. What the hell is that? Well, that's going to look really terrible on the GoPro, but there's some kind of an eagle. It didn't look like a bald eagle. It got a white underbelly. Uh, I'll have to look that up. See what it is right here somewhere. <laughs> Osprey can be found anywhere in the world, and they are the only bird of this kind to live almost exclusively on fish. I just arrived at my just arrived at my cooking spot, and I'm gonna drop off my fish and a little weir here. Uh, here weir, weir weir. That's weir here. There we go. <clears throat> Well, you should say safe and sound right there for a bit. While well, I go clean up and come around and cook them. All right, I'm gonna cheat a little and use this fire pit. I'm not sure exactly what the regulations are, but every campsite I've seen has an extra fire pit. So I suspect that they're meant for cooking. Got roughly a third of my cattail fluff here. I'm just gonna break this up a little bit. I don't even think I need this much. Super lightweight, super fluffy. Feels vaguely like cotton. Well, I'd lost my birch bark, but I easily found some more. Something to catch flame, something to sustain it, then it'll easily burn, and then some small twigs. Wow, that was like gasoline. Oh, don't go away. Of course, doing this in the wind isn't easy. That's crazy that the moment that I got it to go, be in business. Somebody had been using this as a grill in one of the fire pits, so I think I'll do the same. Works for me. Doing dual purpose now. Dual duty. All right, I need to uh, let that burn a little bit and uh, cook that grill to sanitize it some. I need to go get my stew stuff. I rubbed a little bit of that chili seasoning right onto the fish. So that should be yummy. All right, you guys ready for this? That is so good. It might be because it's spicy too, but it just kind of brings a tear to my eye.
I don't know what it is about walleye. It's like candy to me. Even better when you've harvested it yourself. Just realized my eyes look puffy. I don't know if it's putting too much smoke in them or what. Or it could be just from squinting all day. Hopefully it's not an allergy or something. Just sitting down to another hot fire, waiting for twilight to end. Such an incredible amount of time between sunset and dark. Hours. My cacophony of frogs has been replaced with two. Two maybe. Well, it's Sunday, June 2nd, and it's time to go home. Let's look around. It's about 7.30 in the morning. I'm gonna tear camp down and get on the road. Pizza. <laughs> uh, maybe tater tots. Chili cheese tater tots. Sounds really good right now. Uh, something's wrong. I need to stop talking about food. I wasn't hungry until I started talking about food. mosquitoes lift me up and carry me away. If you made it this far, hopefully you've hit like on this video. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. I'll have more content like this coming. Have a look around my channel and uh, check out the variety of things I've got going on. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you'll get outside and learn something new. A quick follow-up on my keto or low-carb traveling experiment. Over the course of 72 hours, I consumed 2,949 calories. Of that, 167 grams were carbohydrates. That's an average of just 1,000 calories per day. About 400 calories, or 74 grams of these carbs, came just from the Uncle Ben's ready rice, and I ate that the final evening. I point that out because I didn't really feel I needed to eat it, and it was way too much food. It was just fun to have with the walleye, which probably counted for less than 300 calories on its own. The first full day, and right up until I ate the rice, I was in ketosis. I rarely felt hungry, nor did I feel low on energy. Though, I also never felt hyper or overly motivated either. This is pretty typical for me when I'm in ketosis or fasting. I came home just over two pounds lighter than when I left. Of course, one person doing this one thing that one time isn't science. More data is needed, and if this really does work, it needs to be repeatable by others who are familiar with this diet and have tried it from home. 
I also need to remove the cheats from the equation by not bringing the rice or chili mix. I'll save that for my next trip. Thanks again for watching.